Hi again, YouTube. This is Colonel here. Before I start this video, I just wanted to, to let y'all know that uh, I got a Patreon started to help support me um, in my time on YouTube. And this is part one for my new series I'm going to be creating called So You Want to Play, a video series that's going to expand on strategies and um, how, how to be a pro at certain games that I do. Um, so if you like these, these types of videos, please, you know, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll be happy to, to produce more for you. You know, check out the Patreon too, because that all the support helps me put all the money back into making these videos for you and making them as, as awesome and as good as can be. So with that, thank you for your time. Roll on the video. So, you want to play Warhammer 3? Want to pull that clutch Pyrrhic victory out of a close defeat? Surprise! Well, you've come to the right place, kid. Hi guys, it's me, Colonel Strat, the strategy extraordinaire here, and I'm here to guide you on your path to be a pro in Total War of Warhammer 3. So I may hear some of you say, but Colonel, all these menus are hard. What do they mean? How much stuff do I have to see on screen? Or my favorite, why can't I just throw my troops at the enemy and they die? Yeah, that's right, little baby Logan. You little baby man. You can't throw cavalry at spears and expect them to cut out on the top now, can you? Well, that's because of what Total War Warhammer and all Total War games are in a nutshell. They're grand strategy games. A grand strategy game incorporates more than just the simple RTS mechanics. The battles are fun. Don't get me wrong, but to truly master these games and come out on top in a campaign, you have to understand the big scale as well. And these mechanics may seem complex at the start and at a glance, and you, it's easy to get sucked in and to get confused with all these advanced mechanics and stats, trade, diplomacy, technologies, but at the end of the day, they all intertwine to make a great game and a great experience when you know how to master them. And it provides a massive challenge and replayability that it, I, f I struggle to find in any other grand strategy game. Now that we have the big stuff out of the way, we talk about the battles, the meat of Total War, the most fun to do and watch, and the battles in Total War can be some of the most fun when they're going your way, and some of the most infuriating when your units just can't seem to hit. No, I don't really feel like it. Um, in these RTS battles, there are many factors that could come into play. Depending on the race you choose, you could specialize in ma ranged units, melee, magic, or even monsters. Looking your way, lizardmen. Knowing your race's strength and playing your strategy to them is the best way to maximize your potential in winning. For example, one of my all-time favorite races is the Dwarves. Because who doesn't like short, swearing drunks that like to shoot things that make them mad? All jokes aside, I favorite Dwarves not only because of their aesthetic, but because their playstyle is an extremely fitting one I prefer to play. It's also really easy to master. The Dwarves are a very defensive race. Here, let's take a look at these hammerers here. All their units have a bonus to melee defense, while the hammerers do lack it, and armor, as well as a decent weapon strength. These stats, as they're called, are the dwarves' strengths. Their weaknesses are charge bonus, speed, and melee attack. Now what do these, what do these stats mean, Carl? I may also hear you say. Well, the stats Generally, you can view them as a percentage to do a certain action that a unit has. So armor, for example. Armor is the chance, percentage chance for a unit to negate missile fire and melee attacks. Meaning, anything that's not armor piercing, which is a special trait, I'll get into those later, are 100% negated by this unit, which makes it extremely resilient and a good frontline unit. Melee attack, on the other hand, is the percentage chance that a unit, an entity within the unit, has to strike an enemy unit and deal damage based on the percentage of their weapon strength, which is the amount of damage they can deal when they hit. 
But the defense is a stat that has a percentage chance for a unit to block an incoming attack. Dwarves naturally have a higher melee defense, which makes them easier to hold a line than to push it. Playing to this strength, you can use their special units, which a lot of them excel at um, artillery. We see that their artillery units are have massive range and missile strength, but are generally considered weak in melee combat, so they need a strong front line to cover them. So, while you have massively dealing um, missile damage units, like Thunderers and cannons and organ guns, your infantry is more on the line of uh, armor and melee defense. Hey, that's pretty good. Like long beards and and iron breakers and hammerers. They're meant to hold a line. That's their job. And the dwarves use these two different styles of units to great effect when worked together. It's all about synergy. No matter what faction you're playing, no matter what race you've picked, it's all about synergy that brings them together. Now, I've talked about frontline units before. Now, frontline units, otherwise known as infantry, are units that they typically have a shield, a high melee defense stat, and a, a decent weapon strength. They might have some special traits, but um, these stats are what really makes or breaks a unit in combat. The special traits are more situational and help races counter each other. But there's frontline units, which are the, the infantry, with shields, preferably. But you could frontline units with two-handed weapons or no shields, but they're not as effective as shielded units because the shield gives them a buff as well. Silver gives them 55%, and bronze gives them 35% missile block when shielded from the front. That is a big bonus to frontline units. The other type of unit are missile units. Missile units could be missile infantry, they could be um, missile monsters, they could be um, a small type of artillery. Um, missile units are anything that shoots a projectile that has a missile strength, a range, and an ammunition factor added onto their stats. Dwarven missile units also have a decent melee stat, and most of them come with a shield which makes them very defensive as well, playing into the dwarves' overall strength of having strong missile units that can withstand a charge, but their most damage is going to come from their missile damage because of their ammunition and their, how far they can hit a target. That's where they're going to deal most of their damage, so playing to that strength is what's going to help you maximize as the dwarves. There's also cavalry units, which dwarves don't have any of. Most factions have a dedicated cavalry unit, the dwarves instead have flying machines, which are a specialty troop that, that certain races have. There are also um, certain races that harbor magic in the game as well. Spells that can be used to change the tide of a battle on a whim. Now, the dwarves, again, my chosen faction, don't have this, but they have something that's kind of similar. They have runes, which give static buffs to the dwarves and give them these rune spells to trigger that are buffing spells. There are three types of spells, buffing spells, attack spells, and debuffing spells. Direct damage and, mis and, and magic missiles and bombardments are the three different types of attack spells. Dwarves have no access to these, but they counter it by having a, a high magic resist. Magic resist is a special stat that all dwarves get that reduces the amount of damage spells and magical abilities. You see that that special icon there. If that icon is over a unit's melee attack stat, that means they deal those type that type of damage. There are different types of damage that units deal. Like the hammerers have a magic damage for their melee attack. Armor piercing, hinted by this icon right here, means that this unit has a high, higher than average armor piercing miss, melee strength or missile strength. And all that negates all the armor. So 
anything that can counter armor it is something that has a high armor piercing damage value because then they'll be able to di bypass this stat entirely make it n negate it entirely so when you learn how to master how to play your chosen race's strengths and you can build an army composition to complement their stat strengths now what's an army composition i may hear you say now an army composition is basically you take the different types of units and you mash them together to make an ideal army that can counter other other armies or just a good strat that can complement each other with good synergy now this is this is early in the campaign you're going to have limited options to choose from part of the grand strategy of the game is not having access to every unit at the beginning but towards the end you should always try to build towards a uh, an army composition that plays to your strengths and maximizes your synergies now for dwarves it's having a front line of highly defensible units highly defensible infantry units that can hold and keep the enemy at enemy busy while you have high damaging missile units and artillery pieces that can deal the damage while the front line is holding the enemy back you can always spice things up by adding in specialty units or adding in um adding in special flying units or or heroes that can buff certain certain units like a master engineer here can buff all the missile units give give them more ammo more melee missile strength and all that they're really good to help play the synergies and maximize it so there's only 19 other units you can have in your army composition so you have a limited amount and a lot of times the ai won't play fair and they'll send multiple armies against you so you might feel like at some times that oh well this army composition doesn't work are you sure about that you know the army composition i might recommend for a race may not work every time depending on the difficulty you set at like like here i'm at legendary difficulty so a lot of times the the ai will get cheats and they will summon more armies than 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 you have than you can field and dwarves are are a, a, a race that is very cost heavy their units are they cost a lot um even like like right here hammers 255 gold for an upkeep that's a lot that balancing your economy is another thing that total war does really well it's very simple system compared to other games i, I that i'll review in the future but it works it just works it works in most factions and most races have to deal with an economy there are certain ones that don't but um most most of them do but the gist of all this is that if you make a nice composition you make a healthy like for dwarves for example again if you make a healthy composition with frontline units some support units for the front line um that's what these ones are classified as the the ones that don't have a shield i usually put, use as a support unit for the front line or as a flanker for the sides um dwarves don't have cavalry so cavalry are the best flanker but dwarves don't have that so they use their their heavy hitting infantry as cavalry you do a composition of front line units of um missile units and artillery units all working together in synergy you can win any fight even when the ai puts two or even three armies up against you if you have the right if you know the right tactics if you know the right setup you have the right units for the for the right comp army composition and you're able to play off their strengths you'll be able to decimate even two or three armies that come your way for dwarves, for example, there are many times where I am facing three or sometimes I'm even facing four other armies. And it may seem hopeless. And the auto-resolve, again, it only determines in the, in the game, it only determines the auto-resolve feature by how powerful your units are compared to the others. Like, for instance, right here. It says I'm going to get a decisive victory with low casualties based on the stats of my units, their health, their stats, 
compared to the enemy's units, how many they have, and their health and stats as well. Now, when you auto-resolve, it automatically calculates what's going to happen. So a lot of times, it can feel like it's unfair, especially when you're going up against four other armies. But if you play the battle, it can always go differently depending on what you do. And a, a master tactic to do for the dwarves, for example, is a defensive tactic where you create a line covering all your missile units and artillery units, and you make sure you place them. The, the ideal terrain defined is a hill. And here's how you check for terrain before battle. You hit the scout terrain. And it will pull, it'll show up, and you can see, if you, if you look hard enough, you can see what, um, what type of terrain you're going to be on. You can pinpoint an area that you'd like to, to make. This works best for defensive factions. Factions that are more attack-heavy, they don't really have to worry about this. Unless they're going up against a defensive faction, they don't have to really worry about it. If there's two orc factions, they're just going to bump heads, because orcs are very melee-centric. Just like corn is, just like almost all the demons are, they're very melee-centric. Except for Zinch, of course, but he's a special case. Now, for picking terrain, it's very vital as a defensive faction to pick a high ground spot. So, Anakin, I have the high ground. You underestimate my power. Like right here, for example. I would put my missile, my, my um, artillery pieces right here missile in front of it, and then ringing around, I'd ring as much melee infantry, frontline units, to hold the bottom parts at the, at the slopes of the, of the hill, of the elevation. This allows your troops that are below to not get hit by friendly fire um, that your missile units will, attack, will, will shoot at the enemy that's coming up. But it also will keep the enemy from coming around. If you find a nice hill that can be, you know, gar garrisoned on and, and closed off, the enemy can't get around if there's an obstacle. The, the AI will try to outflank you if you don't if you have an opening, but if you cover all openings as a defensive faction, then you can if if you have very solid infantry, very solid um, frontline infantry that can hold really well. They have. Um, they have nice stats. They have some, you know, some of these extra traits like immune psychology. They can't be feared or, or terrored. Um, and courage, which gives them a leadership bonus. Leadership is the is another stat that's very effective if you can exploit it. Um, there's a lot of factions and races that deal leadership damage, which can cause, you know, units to rout before they normally would. Leadership is just basically the the scale that a unit, amount of damage and punishment a unit can take before it will rout. Um, when it reaches 10 or, or or under, it'll start to rout, and then when it reaches 0, it will, it will rout and shatter if it's damaged enough. But, um, you know, like charge defense versus large, it negates large charge defenses. Like, this is a very solid unit. To, to spam and put around there to, to hold the line. But you don't want to only hold the line because it's not really good at dealing damage. If you can hold it, though, and then you have damage dealing units in the back that can deal the damage and kill the enemy, then that's a master strat. And I've pulled off many times where it was looking like I wasn't going to win because I had very little units and they had a whole lot more. But... They focused, the AI seems, seems to spam one different type of unit and only play to the strengths but not cover the weaknesses of, the, of, of its factions. So if you can exploit the weaknesses and cover your own and um, play to your strengths, you can, um, you can decimate any army. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Now, having said that, in the future, I will cover more factions. Holy Look at all this damage! And I'll start to cover factions. This was basically just a general overview on, on how to do it. There's a lot more engaging mechanics and more in-depth things to, to cover with this game. 
but this was more just a general overview so that you can get a basic idea of how to play each faction because each even though every race has these base stats that the game calculates everything by they play incredibly differently and that's what makes it so replayable and so fun of a game and so challenging and rewarding to master because you can play the strat game the stat game but if you play strictly do the stats and you don't incorporate any different um, tactics or know how to play certain synergies together you're not going to succeed so like if i were to play dwarves and just pump out a lot of these overpowered infantry yeah yeah i might win one or two fights but coming up against an overpowered enemy i wouldn't be able to pull that clutch victory <laughs> because i wouldn't have the damage dealing units to be able to actually deal out enough sufficient damage to counteract the damage they're causing because dwarven infantry units are powerful their frontline infantry is powerful and in fact um the dwarf warriors are one of the most powerful early game units ever and they can win you a lot in the early game but the late game you'll they'll start to suffer even if you upgrade to longbeards because your your speed is so low there are a lot of factions and races that can outrun you and deal enough damage and they have armor piercing and, and they could just destroy these infantry units but if you play defensively like the dwarves like it, it doesn't explicitly tell you how to play each faction i'm just telling you that the best way to maximize your effectiveness and to get the most victories and the most out of these this faction is to play them defensively and i will cover them more in depth later on because there's a lot more i haven't said about them too yeah the basic gist of of the game is that if you learn how to manage your economy you learn how to build the right um army synergy and you know you learn that you can't ignore your building and you unlock things and unlock new units progress through the tech tree and you uh and you learn how to how to play to the certain strengths of the dwarves and how their tactics work you'll find yourself winning battle after battle and gaining more and more territory and being able to paint this map your faction's color. So, having covered all of these topics about Warhammer 3 and all its various mechanics, I am aware that this is not all the mechanics within the game. I haven't narrowed down every single detail to the finite detail, but I do plan on making videos, bonus videos, to more highlight the specific mechanics that comes in to form the complexity of a game that is Total War Warhammer 3. So if you want to watch those, they're coming as well, where I'll take each of these mechanics ranging from the big campaign map, strategic placing, to the diplomacy system, economy system, you know, the individual tactics system, all the different strategies, common strategies that are used within the game. I will be covering all of those in future videos. So stay tuned. And just remember that this video here was kind of a general overview. A little bit of tactics, dust sprinkled everywhere. But it was more of a general overview of the game. What it's about and how all the parts work together. And I will, in the future, make videos detailing each of those specific parts so that you, my dear viewer, can better understand mechanics. You can turn your novice experience into being a pro and make it worth your while. So stay tuned for those upcoming videos. Like I said, I'll dive deep into each game mechanic, explain it thoroughly so that you can understand how each one works in tandem with each other. So, with that being said, now you're ready to take the plunge? Ready to go out there and decimate your foes? Well then, get out there and give them the... Oh, oh, what? What's that? You don't know what race to pick? You don't know which one is for you? Well, that's the beauty of this game, because it's full of different play styles to choose from. And in the future, I plan to release guides on how to maximize your destructive potential with each race. So stay tuned. And I implore you to go out and try it out. The enjoyment comes from playing the game. And no matter what hiccups you find along the way, the adventure you'll go on, I assure you, 
will be an awesome one. So stay tuned, Strat fans. I will return with more in-depth strats on how to decimate each race and decimate as each race. In the meantime, keep it strategic, Strat fans. Colonel out.